just type into the search engines The Secrets of Survival with Joel Scalzi, and you can watch an hour and a half special report that we did about a week and a half ago that is very, very informative and popular. We're going to do a whole nother two-plus hour report that will be out in a few months that's going to have a lot higher production value to educate people out there. And his book, of course, is Strategic Relocation, and it's in the third edition, available at Infowars.com, discounted. If you want to get informed and also support the broadcast and his work. Now, he was just on last week, and I don't normally have guests on two weeks in a row, but I appreciate him coming on. But so much of what we talked about uh, is now coming out uh, in the mainstream media. Here's the Washington Times today. Russia threatens to strike NATO missile defense sites. Uh, that is one of the reports. This is unprecedented. Uh, their head Russian chief of general, or Russian chief of general staff, uh, came out and uh, had a meeting with NATO and said, if you deploy those, that allows you to have a first strike. You hit us with nukes, we fire missiles, you shoot them down, you do that, we're going to hit your sights. And, and, and I know Joel uh, Skousen's a big uh, expert on what's going on with the Russians, so we'll get his take on that. Uh, also, of course, he's a former Marine Corps fighter pilot, amazing stories with the carrier landings and Mach 2 events and things like that as well. And maybe he'll tell us some of those on the other day, but I doubt we'll have time for that. He, he, he told it in the talk we had. Uh, also, his uh, uncle wrote uh, The Naked Communist, and he's the uh, editor of World Affairs Brief and is a top expert uh, in strategic relocation and uh, creating secure homes. In fact, he wrote The Secure Home, the, uh, the Bible on it. But again, enough of his bio. You know who he is. He joins us on the subject first, the subject first of Obama mentor Wanted Americans put in re-education camps, and that came out in the federal cases. And I have that video out, dovetailed, and they wanted 25 million killed, they thought would need to be killed on those bases. And it goes on, leaked U.S. Army document outlines plan for re-education camps in America. And it says, get their social security numbers, have psyops, find out the political dissenters. It's all in there. It's for America and also overseas. There's been a false debate about that, but I've read it myself, 300 pages, scanned over it. We have screenshots of all the subsections to give us his take on this, because we were just talking about it last week on air when he was in studio, rounding up dissidents. Uh, this is uh, amazing because we know the camps are there, but this is confirming. They're even calling it the Stalinist or North Korean style re-education camp. Uh, this re-education, an amazing term to be using that. They don't call it conditioning or reorientation uh, or de-radicalization. They call it re-education and re-education camps. Joel Skousen, what do you make of this? Well, we're talking about uh, Army Field Manual, manual 3-39.4, uh, and this is a revised field manual from their normal uh, prison camp training manual that they put out to the Army. This has been revised since Abu Ghraib uh, so that it has, uh, you know, uh, specific and, and carefully worded concepts about not abusing principles of uh, prisoners and not allowing uh, detention as... Uh, as hey, Joel, your, your phone's a little bit muffled. I know you're on the road about to catch a plane. Are you on a hands-free... No, I'm on a cell phone. Do me a favor, talk right into the receiver. Okay, how's this? Uh, it's a little bit better. Please continue. All right. In any case, uh, Alex, you're exactly correct. Uh, the article that you put out uh, and Paul Joseph Watson wrote for InfoWars.com is something that everybody should see. Uh, I've read the manual, and uh, it does, in fact, uh, give all of the details about how the Army would implement the lockup of civilians, and it talks about displaced civilians. It's interesting when you read the whole manual, it doesn't raise alarm bells with a normal Army person because this is the typical thing they prepare for in a combat zone. There will be civilians. There will be displaced civilians and how you treat them. But it does give certain hints that, in fact, this is going to be used on Americans. It talks specifically about they will have to get a, an exception to posse comitata and they will have to use executive power to get that ex uh, exception, and they will also seek to get a congressional resolution that we are under an insurgency. Uh, and so it's very, very clear that they put legal language in there to try to justify the re-education of civilians. They do talk about psychological operations officers, how they will try to convince 
these dissidents about the benefits of American policies and actions. So this is clearly a, a, a document aimed at Army officers in order to not alarm them. And that's why we have to be careful to say this does not give um, what the government is trying to do. This is implementation to Army officers, and it's specifically written so it doesn't alert them to what the government is really up to. Sure, it's dryly, it's dryly written. Most military and police called in and understood this, but one guy called in and just said, well, this is for overseas. This isn't for domestic. And I just had the feeling it was a staged call. It sounded sounded like a psyop. Well, clearly this is uh, aimed domestically as well because they do mention posse comitatus and the fact that they're going to have to get an exception. Now, of course, if you were a prisoner under that and you said, look, I've read the copy of the man you're supposed to within 72 hours give me a, a right of appeal. It's I'm to have a... A determination of whether or not I'm under the Geneva Convention, all that's right in your manual, you know, they'd probably just blow you off and say, uh, you know, uh, we don't have that stuff in front of us, and you don't have a lawyer, and you can't do anything to us. Uh, but clearly the language is written in there not to offend the, the sensibilities of patriotic Army officers. They think they're simply going to be implementing something because of massive unrest that we have to control populations during a military operation within the borders of the United States. Well, the point is, this didn't just pop up today. It's been a slow, incremental, across administrations, continuity of agenda towards total control. And then you've got the fact that this this is set up from what I've seen along a Soviet model. Joel, do you agree with that? I mean, all the terms being used, re-education, loudspeaker systems, uh, the whole way that this has uh, been deployed and set up uh, is is exactly what uh, came out in the federal court case with Bill Ayers when they were uh, planning to put conservatives, libertarians, constitutionalists in giant camps and kill 25 million of us. Well, I do agree with you that this uh, matches very clearly both the Soviet model and the uh uh, and to a certain extent the Nazi uh, Germany model, but more like the Soviet model and even uh, very disturbingly much like the North Korean model. And so I think this is something they, I mean, it has been the, in, in recent history, it has been Vietnam, Laos, uh, and China that have used, uh, and North Korea, this, the re-education camps to the greatest extent. These are the people that have the, the top expertise, including torture, which this manual does not mention. But uh, uh, And I think they're not going to tell the military that they're going to go back to that. But once you get in these camps, of course, there are no rights. There are no procedures. Uh, you do as I say is what they tell you. Well, we know from Abu Ghraib and other camps in Iraq, we know from Camp X-Ray, they have the general camp and they have a special torture camp for special personnel, generally contractors or CIA, uh, where they take people. And so, uh, but, but expanding on that, they even have pain compliance in jails now. The restraint chairs, the billy clubs, the, the tasers, undoubtedly, they're going to be controlling the dissidents in these with torture. But this is only two years old, 2010. Why do you think they're now upgrading it and using terms like re-education, re-education camp? I mean, that's directly out of, as you said, Stalinist Russia or North Korea. Why not use a politically correct term? Well, you know, the, the military, and I'm a former military officer, and I've uh, had uh, prison camp training as part of the Marine Corps as, a, as an officer, and they've had PSYOPs uh, uh, is a term that's been around since the 60s. So uh, that isn't particularly new. Uh, Re-education is new. Uh, you know, it's probably slow accommodation of the American people to get them used to this, but more so it's accommodation of American Army officers. You know, ever since the rise of Ron Paul, as you know, there has been a mini revolt going on in the military services against, uh, you know, illegal actions uh, and being called to that. So the military's got a real problem. I think one of the reasons for implementing this kind of language is to ferret out those who might object to it, get them out of the service. That's what all of the mercenaries involved in, uh, in these past two wars have been involved in order to filter, to vet, to develop a cadre of, frankly, I'll use the word thugs, people who don't have a conscience that will be able to implement this. 
and they're reaping thousands of these people. They don't have to bring in foreign troops. They're going to have plenty of Americans that will do this to Americans as long as they, you know, can separate the people that have Internet access and understand what the agenda is and those that are dumbed down yes men in the military. That's why we're in a race. We talked privately at dinner about the TSA. Uh, now we've confirmed they're now going to be in every city and town, warrantless bag searches, and the Secret Service, CBS News Today, groping all over Chicago. So the feds come to your town and start groping you for the f Fuhrer's safety. Uh, it's clear. The TSA is here to acclimate us to being stopped and then, oh, you're on the list. You, did, you, you didn't know you were on the list. You get put in the back of a squad car taken to a facility, trucked to one of these re-education camps. Well, you know, all of these these re-education camps have been very, very difficult to ferret out. Uh, I believe that they are virtually all on dismantled or active duty military bases. Uh, I have had my subscribers out searching for these and tracking down rumors of what they have, and a lot of those rumors end up being uh, false, but we have confirmed that they do have them on uh, on military bases. The Nellis Air Force Base has one. Uh, Seymour Johnson. Yeah, it's generally one. right out in the middle, and they call it a a, a, a internment training facility. Uh, I mean, they have. I mean, we've confirmed a bunch of them. So, so they call them a training facility, but they're sitting there waiting. That's right. I mean, it's like the one at Nellis, for example. Now, Nellis has this prison uh, camp system that's built right as part of the fence, the triple fencing that goes around the nuclear warhead storage facility. Well, it obviously serves dual purpose. Why put a prison camp right on the border of that fence if you aren't, in, in, in essence, going to use double duty and put prisoners in there for a holdover if you have a massive influx of, of, of prisoners? And why, for example, at Seattle, do you have this big holding facility where they can fly people in ready for distribution and shipping out on rails? This is... Uh, preparation for this kind of event. I mean, this uh, facility in Seattle is massive, this holding facility, and it's nearly empty. They just keep enough prisoners going through there to keep the staff. Oh, there you go. Sandpoint Naval Brig that they've still got is in my film Police State to the Takeover. I had the local newscast where at the G20, uh, or no, that was the... Um, WTO meeting in 99, they took thousands and put them in the, quote, old naval brig, and FEMA ran it. So that's my point. They admit it's sports stadiums, it's old brigs, it's old armories, it's old facilities. We learned a lot in the um, Emergency Center's Establishment Act. It said old bases, how they do it. That was an attempt to bring it out in the open and get more funding, but it told us uh, basically the whole blueprint. And it's interesting that Congress did, and I confirmed this, authorize funding to refurbish World War II prison camps, but I've checked that out, and there's nothing that's been active in that regard. It's, uh, it could be done in the future, but nothing has been done. So those rumors are false right now about those being refurbished and ready to go. It's incredible. Uh, shifting gears. Well, l let me ask this question, and we'll get into the Russia situation, the Russia threat. The military is so awake and gave the majority of their contributions to Ron Paul. I see that in calls on the streets. The most awake group now is the military. Wasn't that case 10 years ago, but it's overwhelming and happening fast. The military callers say half their buddies or all their buddies. It's always above half, but sometimes all. Generally about 70% are totally awake now to a certain extent, they say. What is the system going to do? Just because they've got a bunch of commissars that want to put Americans in, in re-education camps and would love to you know, get you and I and others in there and break our noses, they're not going to get away with it. The minute they try that, it is going to be explosive, I mean, it, uh, <laughs> to, to say the least. Well, think Blackwater. Think the, the special brigades of the mercenaries. These are being increased all of the time. These people are hungry for work. I'll bet you will see more and more of these specialized mercenaries uh, moving in to engage in this uh, rather than ordinary troops because I think they would have a problem unless there was proper justification, which they won't be, obviously. So I think you're right. Uh, but they, they know about this. They know about this resistance. That's why they are uh, really restricting Internet access to soldiers. They're tracking it. tracking all of this stuff, and I've uh, talked to soldiers who have been chastised publicly for being on Ron Paul's sites and engaging in what they call extremist literature. Uh, you know, it's just as bad as the, the chaplains now being forced to uh, 
or forced out of the service if they refuse to service the gay community in the, in the service with uh, positive feedback in their chaplain sermons. Amazing. Uh, there's been two new bombings in the Russian Caucasus region. It leaves at least 12 dead. That's in the L.A. Times I just broke minutes ago. Let's start getting into the Russia situation. Um, this is unprecedented from what I've seen in history in, in modern times. Russia threatens to strike NATO missile defense, and that's in the Moscow newspapers uh, in a meeting with NATO, their, their head general. I guess I'll butcher his name, Nikolai Mar... How do you pronounce that? Mar... Argov? Markarov? Makarov? Uh, said, uh, said that uh, if they begin to activate the missiles, or before they're activated, Russia's going to attack them. Joel Skousen. Well, the, the key is that they claim the right to preemptively strike them. Um, there's no way they're going to go through with a, a preemptive strike without some justification, but they've got preemptive out there. Now, what's interesting about this is the State Department and the U.S. military should be coming on and saying, Russia has no excuse to be upset. These are not capable of striking anyone. These have no warheads on them. So Russia is entirely mistaken. You know, the wolf is grin about it. They know better than that, too. You can't make an anti-missile system into an offensive weapon. It has no warhead. It can't do anything at, at all. In fact, it isn't even very effective against missiles. But, of course, I believe our own globalist government is doing this on purpose, not because they intend to really defend Europe. There aren't enough missiles to do that. I mean, we've just got a handful of them. In fact, it has really caused a backlash in the Czech Republic. I've talked to people in Czechoslovakia who say they are hopping mad that they went out on a limb to accept anti-ballistic missiles in Czech and the radar system, and then the United States government pulled out and left us vulnerable to Russia. He says now... We have had most of the Americans leave Czechoslovakia and they're being replaced by Russian, Russian businessmen. Russian leaders are coming in to fill the vacuum because American is looked upon as an unreliable ally. It's all part of the global strategy to actually give provocation to the Russians to expand in the region. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Joel Skousen's our guest. I'm Alex Jones. Sick of the globalist eugenicist control freaks adding poison to your water and laughing as you get sick and die? Start purifying your water with ProPure. My friends, I've done a lot of research, and the best gravity filter out there, bar none, is ProPure. And it's available discounted at InfoWars.com. Its filters are silver impregnated to prevent bacterial growth. There's no priming required. It's NSF 42 certified. Optional fluoride filters can reduce fluoride up to 95%. Easy to set up and use. Doesn't require electricity. Purify water from lakes, streams, ponds, and wells. This filter system leaves in beneficial minerals, which is key. Save money by not buying bottled water and avoid BPA that leaches from the plastic. ProPure is the best gravity-fed filter out there. It's what my family uses. Infowars.com already has the lowest price on ProPure, but if you add the promo code WATER at checkout, you get an additional 10% off at Infowars.com. You can also call to order 888-253-3139. Joel Skousen is our guest. We're getting into the Russia situation. So I might have stole your thunder there, or do you disagree? As we went to break, I'm saying, is this just a way to give Russia a provocation to expand and a way to antagonize Russia? Uh, what's the whole point of this? Well, the entire missile system is meant to antagonize and provoke Russia. Um, you are correct about that. The Russians know, as well as everyone else, that these missiles are not there to stop a rogue Iranian missile. If you want to stop an Iranian missile, you put them out on the border with Iran. In fact, Russia went to the extent of offering the U.S. missile site on the border with Iran uh, so that uh, they could prove that the uh, U.S. wanting to keep them in Europe were aiming them at Russia. Now, what this really means, there's two points to why they made this threat of preemptively striking these missile sites. Number one, they want to scare the former Soviet states, like Poland, into the fact that you're going to be the target of a nuclear attack if you accept these missiles or if you allow them to stay on your soil. And uh, that's, so there is some pressure being applied, and that's one of the pressures that made uh, you know, Czechoslovakia uh, nervous when the U.S. didn't back them up when the Russians issued their threat to Czechoslovakia. Uh, the other thing is that they're giving fair warning that in fact, and I'm convinced, 
because uh, that they will use tactical nuclear weapons, not ICBMs to take out these sites. They'll use tactical nuclear weapons to take out these missile sites before they launch their planned preemptive ballistic missile strike on the West because these missiles are primarily there in order to take out Russian missiles in the boost phase. Now, we know from PDD-60, Alex, that the U.S. intends to absorb a nuclear first strike and, and not retaliate till afterwards when it's ineffective and when we have nothing or hardly anything left. And so that is why I believe that the U.S. You know, will, in fact, allow these missile sites to be destroyed before Russia uh, launches their preemptive nuclear strike, which I'm not predicting until the early next decade. So what do you expect Russia to do? I mean, does Russia normally just make threats to attack sites, uh, they say, before they even get activated? Well, once again, I think the reason why it's being done now is to scare the former Soviet states into not cooperating in this manner with the West. Now, remember that Russia intends to uh, control, and they still are to a large extent, controlling the former Soviet states. Uh, I've been talking to all of the dissidents, whether it's in Hungary or Bulgaria, and all of these so-called anti-communist leaders are actually former communists who are still communists and who are still got Russian advisors in there. And when we let these people into NATO, it's just like having spies into NATO. And that's what our own globalist government intends by continuing to seek to expand NATO into the former Soviet states. We're letting them in the back door. And it's not going to turn out pretty for the West when the Russians finally decide to take back these former Soviet states. Joel Skousen, thank you so much for the analysis. And the final equation, I think this re-education camp thing is really starting to wake some people up. This has gone super viral. Yes, I think so. Uh, kudos to your site on uh, breaking the story, Alex. Good job. Oh well, no! I mean, it's just—it's. I'm just saying, it's—it's—it's it's, it's exciting though that people are really starting to pay attention. Well, it is. If my emails, I'm getting hundreds of emails a day. I can hardly keep up with it. Uh, uh, thanks to uh, the warnings that uh, your site and, and mine are giving out on this. WorldAffairsBrief.com. Thank you so much, Gerald. Thank you, Alex. By the way, folks, I'll be back live. I should always add this Sunday, four to six p.m. Central, five to seven Eastern, two to four. Pacific, 3 to 5 Mountain. If you don't have a local AM or FM in your area, or this, we need XM to pick up the Sunday show. It's only weekdays, XM 166. You can always listen at InfoWars.com on the free audio streams there. And don't forget, uh, in the Listen section, we have the free podcast every day to be delivered to your iPhone or iPad or whatever system you have when and where you want. Key information coming up. If you believe in this information and want to support its viral spread, go to the InfoWars store at InfoWars.com. We've got the new G.I. Joe InfoWars t-shirts. We've got the incredible ProPure gravity-fed filters available at InfoWars.com in the store. We've got a new DVD, Sinus Under Attack, the Don't Tread on Me flag. We've got all sorts of different bumper stickers to help spread the rebellion virally. It's all there. Wristbands, citizen rule books in every order. Order online at InfoWars.com today. The water filters, the canteens, it's all there. InfoWars.com.